Hi everyone, today I'm going to be talking about a new converter product that was recently released from Banner, and it's the dual analog input or output IO link converter. So a little bit of, uh, about this converter that you see right here in my hand. This converter has the ability to take in two analog inputs and also drive two analog outputs on the ILink communication channel. So you could take in 0 to 10 volt or 4 to 20 milliamp signals on either of these two ports, and you could also drive 4 to 20 or 0 to 10 volt outputs on each of these two ports. So you could do both. Um, so you could have two analog inputs coming in and also two analog outputs going out in just one compact device. So that's very effective. Also, and we're going to be highlighting in this in this video, on this IO link port that you see right here, there's an additional pin for PFM. And that's going to be very, very powerful for retrofitting existing analog app applications with lighting products. So we're going to be highlighting that today. And the, the way you do this is you connect this to your IO link master, you configure the device first, and you configure the device for pin mirroring. So to do this, you take in your analog signal here that you see, a 4 to 20 or 0 to 10 volt signal, and you're going to set this up to pass that signal through on this port right here. So you're passing that 0 to 10 or 4 to 20, or 0 to 10 or 4 to 20 signal uh, from this port to this port, and that's called mirroring. And what, you, what you're able to do once you do that is also drive a PFM output. And this is going to be immensely powerful for retrofitting existing analog signals that are installed throughout the world with a lighting product. And so we're going to be highlighting that today, but think of many analog signals deployed throughout the world that may be doing things like pressure monitoring, temperature monitoring. Um, there's many different signals out there that you could monitor. Tank level is a big one. And you want to, without disrupting the existing PLC, add a visual factory element to that. So that's what we're going to be highlighting today in this video using this converter. And it's very easy to set up. So let's take a look. So here we have an analog sensor that's already communicating back to a PLC, and that's replicated by this um, multimeter that you see right here. And we're just getting a 4 to 20 milliamp signal that's going back to that PLC, or that multimeter in this case. Um, and as you can see, it just bringing back that signal, very standard. But what if we wanted to add, without disrupting this, a visual factory element? You could do that very effectively by just setting up one of these converters. So let's, take, let's do that. This can all be done with very simple M12 connectivity. All you need is a lighting product, the converter, and some standard M12 splitters. So let's, let's hook it up. So I'm going to take this sensor that I have set up here. I'm going to plug it in on one port of the converter that you see that's connected to our light. I'm going to plug it in right here. And the cable that's going to the PLC, I'm going to add on the other port. So we're not disrupting the PLC. That's, that's key here. The signal is still going back to the PLC, but we're just overlaying a lighting product with this converter. And then lastly, on this port that you see right here, we're connecting a light. So if you take a look, we've got the PLC, we've got the sensor, and we've got the light. The sensor signal is still going back to the PLC. We're not disrupting that in any way. But now we get a beautiful visual factory element. So personnel could see my pressure is going too high. My tank level is at a certain height. My pressure might be going too high or temperature. You could add a visual factory element to any analog application. And that could be a banner analog device or another manufacturer's analog device. Any type of application where you want to add a visual factory element to this, you could do so beautifully with this combination of products. So now that we've reviewed the setup, let's take a look at how to program the hardware to do this. So to do this, we'll need an IO-Link converter. In this case, we're using the R45C-KII-IIQ uh, converter. This is an IO-Link device, so to configure it, we'll need to use an IO-Link master. And in this case, we're using Banner's DXM-R90-4K IO-Link master. We're going to connect this to our laptop here using a standard Ethernet cord set, and we have a 24-volt DC power supply. So we're going to configure this first, and then after that, we're going to configure our lighting products using the Pro Editor cable and our Pro Editor software. And for the lighting products, you could use either the WLS15 Pro Light or one of our WLS27 Pro Lights, which have many different lengths. So first, let's actually configure 
our converter to do port mirroring like we highlighted in the video. So let's do this. Very simple to set up using an IO-Link master. So let's plug in our IO-Link converter into our IO-Link master. In this case, we're just going to be plugging it in on port 1. Now let's go over to our PC. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug this into our PC using an Ethernet cord set. Now that we have that plugged in, we can switch over to our software. So now that we're connected to our PC with our IO-Link master and our IO-Link converter, we're going to first want to download the IO-Link configuration software to configure the converter. So to do that, let's go to support, software, and this will be the page where you could download some of Banner's software tools. And remember, we're also going to want to download the Pro Editor software as well for configuring our light. So we're going to want to download Pro Editor software and our IO-Link configuration software. So once you have the IO-Link configuration software installed, let's open up our IO-Link configuration software and connect first to our IO-Link master. Before connecting to our IO-Link master, we're also going to want to download the IODD file for the converter itself. So every IO-Link device will have an IODD file. To download the IODD file, you could go to iodfinder.com. And so with this tool, you'll be able to type in the part number for the IO-Link device that you have connected and download the IODD. So in this case, we're connected to the R45C-KII-IIQ. Let's collect that. And here we'll just download the IODD file. So once you have the, the, you download the file itself, you could save the file to your desktop or wherever you'd like to save it. So once you have it installed, we can now go to the software, click Load IODD, and navigate to where you installed the IODD. I already have it installed, so I'm not going to go through those steps in this case. So now we have the IODD installed and ready to go, we can connect to the IODD master by clicking Connect. So we're connected to our DXM R94K via Ethernet, so we're going to select Ethernet in this button here. And we're quickly going to just do a scan of our network. So you could click on the subnet that you want to scan. So in this case, uh, we're on the 192.168.0 subnet. And by default, our IO-Link masters with Ethernet have a 192.168.0.1 default IO-Link or default IP address. So we're going to want to be on that same subnet. So we're going to just click Go and scan our network. So it's scanning for devices now, and it could find the DXM R90 4K I've connected to my PC. So let's click that and click confirm and then click connect. So if you remember, we have our R45C converter connected on our port one of our IO-Link master. So right now you can see the device up in the upper left here. We're just going to click on the converter. It's the R45C-KII-IIQ. This is the 4 to 20 model. Uh, we also have the R45C-KUU-UUQ. That's a 0 to 10 volt model. We're just going to click parameters. And this parameters area is where we change the configuration of the IOLink converter. So let's read the current configuration and then make the necessary changes to do port mirroring. So now, here we can see the different um, parameters we could change by clicking on these different menus. So we're going to want to enable port mirroring on port 2. So what we're going to do is go to Enabled. And what we're actually going to be doing is we're going to be taking the 4 to 20 signal going into port 1 and mirroring it. So we're, this is what's going to enable us to replicate the 4 to 20 signal from the sensor going into one port and replicate that going in out to the other port. And what that's going to enable us to do is to retrofit existing analog signals without disrupting the PLC. What we're also going to want to do is change the um, vendor specific configuration. 
So we're going to want to go into uh, vendor specific configuration and change this to pulse frequency modulation. So PFM. And this, what this is going to do is allow us to have that uh, PFM output on the mail port of the converter. And that's, that's basically it for configuration. Once you've done the, these changes, you're just going to click Write Parameters and we're done. So after we've configured our IO-Link converter for port mirroring, uh, the next step is to go in and program the light. So there's two different options. We can do the uh, WLS27 Pro or the WLS15. So in this video, we're just going to go with the WLS27 and we're going to connect it to our Pro Editor cable here. So the M12 connector on our Pro Editor cable, so we're just going to connect that right here. And now that we're connected, we're just going to plug in the USB side into our laptop or PC. So let's go ahead and switch over to our software. So now that we're connected to our PC using the Pro Editor cable, uh, we have a WLS 15 or WLS 27 light connected. Let's go in and configure this device in the Pro Editor software by clicking connect. So in the software itself, you'll see several applications to choose from. So we're going to want to select distance. And from there, we're going to want to go to basic distance. Here's where you could change some configurations of the light itself. So you could go in and select, um, in this case, we're going to want this to be PFM, and as well as the, the PFM low and PFM high. So in this other area down here below, we could actually change the lighting configuration. So if we want it to be different colors when we're at 100% full versus 75% full or 33%, this is fully customizable. So you could set all these different segments based on the percentage that you want to use. So for example, if I want it to be red at 25% and yellow at say 40%, you could change that. You could also do things with intensity. If you want it to be high intensity, low, medium, maybe you want it to be high intensity for when it goes red and kind of a standard intensity for when it goes green, for example you could configure all of these different settings based on what you're trying to do. So once you've kind of optimized your, your setting for the light and you want the, the colors to appear in a certain way based on the, uh, the output, you're going to want to select Write. And that'll write the configuration to the light itself. And you'll see a device write success. So with two simple configurations of the converter and the light, you could add these devices to just about any analog 4 to 20 or 0 to 10 volt application for adding a lighting product to it. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us anytime. Thanks very much.